Hello and welcome to this, the first of our videos introducing the Arduino. That's the popular open source electronics prototyping microcontroller device. We're going to start this foundation series with a look at the different Arduino models available, find out what shields are, install the software you need, which is the Arduino Development Environment, or ADE, look at an Arduino sketch and find out what that is, and then run our very first program. The Arduino is an open source design, so there are many versions made by other organizations. Some are just copies, others have additional function and options. For these videos, we're going to be using one of the original boards from Arduino, and these can be purchased on their website or from one of the many retailers around the world who supply them. A list is available on the Arduino website. So let's have a quick look at the Arduino website at arduino.cc. The website is full of very useful and interesting information, and we're going to look at the product section, and this gives us a list of all the products that Arduino make. And the left-hand two columns are the main boards. At the top is the Uno and Leonardo, then there's the Mega 2560 and the Dew, which is their most recent board that's just started shipping with an ARM processor. And there's an Arduino with built-in Ethernet, and there's the Mega ADK. There are lots of options. We are currently using two of these Arduino boards, and we're going to have a look at them now. First of all, there's the Arduino Uno. This is one of the popular boards recently, and a lot of people will have this if you bought an Arduino uh, in the not too distant past. A more recently announced board is this one, which is the Arduino Leonardo. You can see that they are of similar size, difference in connectors, but there is another fundamental difference and something that makes it really worthwhile buying a Leonardo if you are buying your first Arduino board. And that's because the Leonardo has the ability to act as what's known as a human interface device, or HID. What's that you're probably saying? Well, basically, it allows the Arduino to act as a keyboard or mouse. So if you program it, you can then connect it into something like a personal computer, and it can send commands, and the computer thinks there is a keyboard on the end of it and telling it what to do. And in fact, we use that particular function here in our studio to control some of our equipment. So why is the Arduino so popular? Well, two things, and two things that go hand in hand, and that's the software and the hardware. The Arduino development environment and the documentation that goes with it are a great resource. But great hardware is not much use without the tools and software to use it. The reference pages on the Arduino website are very useful indeed. And let's have a quick look at those. The reference pages list all the commands that are available in the language or in the libraries. But don't worry too much, and if this all seems a little bit complicated, don't worry about it for now. But as you start to use various commands, you can come here and first of all find out if there is a command that you want to use, but also how to use it. Under structure, it talks about setup. So if we click on setup, it tells us that the setup function is called when a sketch starts and you can use it to initialize variables, etc. So uh, it then gives you an example. So some great resources available on arduino.cc. So what about the hardware? Why is that so special and so popular? Well, in summary, it's because it is cheap, it is relatively easy to program, and allows you to connect external devices and things to it. They're from switches to LEDs to sensors for temperature or motion, motors for controlling things. You can even connect it to the internet. You can connect it to radios, to GPS devices, and a whole lot more. The hardware is so flexible because the Arduino boards have multiple pins you can use to connect 
analog or digital devices to. And let's have a look at our boards again. And you can see that on both boards, there are these rows of connectors that allow you to connect other devices. Now this leads us nicely on to what is known as shields. So what is an Arduino shield? Well, a shield is a daughter board, if you like, that will plug into an Arduino using those pins. And we've got a couple of examples here. Here is a board which is an Ethernet board. And this is, this is from Arduino. And underneath you can see all the pins. And you just put the board on top and press down and connect the pins. And then you have an Arduino with additional electronics to provide Ethernet support. And here is a, another daughter board. This one has a little display and some buttons on it that allow you to control the display to go up, down, or to change a letter or number on the display. And again, that has the pins on the bottom and you can connect that by simply inserting it into the connectors on the top. You'll notice that on the Ethernet board, it has another row of sockets which allows you to stack another board on top of it. So in theory, at least, you can have a stack of Arduino boards. But a word of caution here. The boards use different pins, but sometimes they use the same pins. And if you have a clash, then it really won't work. So you have to be very cautious when you stack more than one board on top of another. So let's have a look now at installing the Arduino development environment software. The software is available for Windows, for the Mac, and for Linux. And you can download it from the arduino.cc website. We run it on a Mac, and it simply just worked. We had no problems with it at all. But on Windows, the install is a little bit trickier. So let's run through that now. So if we go to the download page on arduino.cc, you can see all the various software platforms that are supported. And we're just going to download the Arduino Windows software. It's 91 megabytes in size, and it'll be downloaded in just a few seconds. It downloads as a zip file, but we'll cover that in a minute. And we'll open the containing folder. And let's go and close the other window, so not to confuse ourselves. We now need to, as it's a zip file, to extract that. And you can do that by moving it and telling it to extract. So we'll now do that down onto the desktop and select Extract and Extract. And there we go, it has started. This takes uh, 30 seconds or so. And we put the files onto our desktop. There isn't an install file to run. You can just run it from wherever you have installed it. So you don't have to copy it to your desktop. You can copy it to wherever you would like it to be on your Windows machine. There we go. It's uh, finished and it's showing us where the files are. So we'll shut that window and we'll shut that window. And we'll go and open it again and run Arduino. Publisher couldn't be verified. Do we want to run it? Yes, there we go. Close that window. And we are running the Arduino development environment. And we've shut that down and we've just plugged in the Arduino and you can see it says it's installing some device. And it says the device driver software was not successfully installed. And this is the clever little bit you have to do at the moment on Windows machine. And that is go to Control Panel and go to System and Security. Go to System and then click on Device Manager. And you'll see that there is an unknown device. So we need to do an update of the driver software. And you have to browse to the Arduino directory that we just installed. And go to there. 
and we have to go to the drivers directory and we say OK and we say next and install the driver software. And it just takes a few seconds and it says that it has successfully updated the driver software and we close that and you can see here that it has the Arduino on COM3. We need to remember COM3 for a little bit later. So that's how you install it on Windows. It's pretty straightforward. The difference between the Windows and the Mac software is there's hardly any difference at all. Basically the difference on where the menu bar is. So what is the Arduino development environment? Well, it consists of several sections. I've got it running on the Mac here, so let's take a look at it on that machine. Before we look at the main window, I just want to show you something under the system preferences. If you want to change the default language, you can do that there and select one of the supported languages. You do need to restart the software for that to be the default. We've also changed our editor font size to 18 to make it easier for you to read our screens. But you can again play around with that there and that also requires a restart of the Arduino software. So let's have a look at the main window. At the top of the window is a toolbar. The first of the icons is for verify. This checks your code. It doesn't mean that your code will do what you want it to do. All that it verifies is that it is legal, that the syntax is correct, that there are no errors in the layout of the code. The next item is upload. This will take your code, convert it into a format the Arduino can run and upload it to the Arduino. The next is a open a new window open a existing file and save your file. And over on the right hand side is the serial monitor and we'll touch on that in a later video. The main window in the middle, the big white area, is the text editor and this is where you write your code. Then at the bottom of the screen there are areas where we get messages from the Arduino and We'll look at that in a minute. And at the bottom right is also an indication of where it thinks your Arduino, what type of Arduino, in this case a Leonardo, and it says that it's on this particular port. Now the port is quite important because I'm going to go up to the Tools menu and there are two settings here that you need to check are correct. The first is Board and you need to select, make sure that you have got the right board selected. We are running an Arduino Leonardo, so that is correct. And the other is the serial port. Now, if you remember on our Windows installation, we talked about COM3. So in that case, on that installation, you would select COM3. Here on the Mac, we're actually running on a USB port and it comes up uh, slightly differently defined as dev slash tty dot USB modem. And we're selected on that. So that's a quick overview of the environment. Well, now we are going to load some software, a sketch. So what is a sketch? Well, a sketch is the commands that you create for your program. Now, don't worry too much if you don't follow this next part of the video in its entirety. The good news is that the Arduino development environment has lots of built-in sketches to help get you started. And we are going to start with one of those. So let's go back to the Arduino development environment and load our very first sketch. We're going to go to File, Examples, Basics and Blink. And we're going to load that sketch. It opens as a new window. I'm just going to expand the screen just a little bit so the whole of the program is on our screen. Now you can divide this text area into four sections. The top area I'm highlighting here is enclosed with a slash asterisk and an asterisk slash. 
And what that says to the development environment is ignore basically anything that's inside here. So you use it for making comments. Normally at the beginning of a sketch it'll give a description of what the sketch does. And in this case it says it turns on the LED for one second, then turns off for one second. And it says this is example code and is in the public domain. Quite often you will see the author's names in there. And you can also, also find the, the slashes and asterisks throughout the program if people want to put comments in. Now the other way of putting a comment in is to put a slash slash at the start of a single line. And then that way the development environment ignores what's on the rest of the line. But this area here is an area where you normally define your variables. And in this case, we've defined a variable which is an integer. And we're going to call that variable LED. And it's going to have initially a number of 13 in it. As I said, if you're not following this exactly, don't worry. I'm sure as we go through, you will understand what this is, what this means. The next area is the setup routine. And this is in every Arduino sketch. And this just runs once when you first run the program. In this case, it is saying that it's going to initialize the digital pin as an output. So it's using a programming command called pin mode. And it's telling that that pin mode LED, which is 13. So it's telling it's going to tell the Arduino that pin 13 is going to be set to output. Then the final section on the window is our main program loop. And this loop just keeps on running as long as the program is running. And what it is doing here, it is saying using a command digital write to the LED, which we know is pin 13, and make that high. So it's going to turn the LED, which is connected to pin 13. The Arduino boards, the recent boards have, most of the boards have an LED on the board that is connected to pin 13. So we don't need to attach an additional LED and we'll see that in a minute. But this is saying make that high, i.e. turn the LED on. The next line is saying delay for a thousand milliseconds. So wait for a second. Then we're using the digital write command again to tell the LED to go low, to take the voltage off of the LED, to take it down to zero volts. And then delay for one second. And there at the end of it, it'll go back up to the loop and it'll just run the program again and again and again. So that's a very simple program. And what we're going to do is run through some of the options that we talked about at the top. The first one is verify. So I'm going to click on that. Now we haven't made any changes to this, so it should work perfectly. It said it was compiling. It said it's done compiling. And it's in this white message means that it's finished successfully. It says that the the binary sketch, so that's the program that it ready to send to the Arduino board, is 4,858 bytes of a maximum size of just over 28,000 bytes. We can now send that, because it's compiled, it's compiled successfully, we can send that to the Arduino board. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in some rubbish up here and then just try verifying it again. And you will see that down in the bottom in the message area it's come up with all sorts of errors. So it hasn't finished compiling. So you can't send this to the Arduino. And it has highlighted the bit of code that it thinks it's that is in error. So we will delete that and we will verify it again. It's compiling and done. And we're now going to upload that to our Arduino. So it's going to run. So we'll press the button there. It says it's uploading. Just wait a couple of seconds and it should have successfully uploaded. So we've loaded a sketch. We verified it in the Arduino development environment and then we uploaded it to our Arduino. 
So if you've been following along, it should be pretty obvious what should be happening now. The LED that's connected to pin 13 on the Arduino should be flashing on for a second and off for a second. So let's have a look and see. And you can see that the little LED down here is in fact doing just that. So we have successfully run our first program on the Arduino. Now you can play around with those values. You can make it come on for five seconds or not come, and then have a pause of 10 seconds. Just have a play around with that code and verify it and upload it. That's the real basis of using the Arduino. So we've installed the Arduino development environment. We've looked at the structure of an Arduino sketch and we've even run our first sketch. So in the next part of Arduino Foundation series, we were looking at how we can get the Arduino to interact with the outside world, not just with the LED on its board. And we will start by looking at how we can connect a switch and an external LED. For more information, check out our website at youcontrolit.tv. Follow us on Twitter at youcontrolit.tv. And if you're watching this on YouTube, that's great but please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks very much indeed for watching and we hope you'll come back soon.